Modern humans are chronically inflamed, and it's a huge problem, not just for your lifting and your gains, which we'll be discussing in today's video, but also your health and longevity. And what I wanna talk about is the humongous, not just correlation, but causation between inflammatory response that is chronically elevated and your central nervous system, which therefore means your recovery, because that's really what recovery is, is restoring the central nervous system, which then alleviates all the muscles and everything else in the body. We're gonna be discussing how these two are not just paired, but some integrative practices you can do to take care of your chronic inflammation issue, which is different than your acute inflammation that you receive from a bout of lifting, which is actually a good thing. We want some inflammation in the human body, but we're gonna be discussing the difference between the two. Now, modern humans are chronically inflamed for a host of a million different reasons. A lot of it has to do with the glyphosate that's literally poisoned both our rainwater and soil. Zach Bush has an amazing video on this. If anyone's interested in it, just Google or YouTube Zach Bush glyphosate. I'm sure it'll pop up. After School YouTube channel has an amazing episode covering this entire thing. Besides that, we're dealing with chronically elevated stress levels, some of the poorest sleep records in the history of mankind, and we're basically just never living in sync with nature, which sounds hippy dippy, but when we cover the section on grounding later, you're gonna see how important it is to actually be connected to the nature and how this affects chronic inflammation. Now, before we dive into the weeds, what you need to understand are two things. One, acute inflammation is a good thing. We want inflammation response whenever we do a hard bout of lifting or we get sick. It is an autoimmune response. It's something that we want the immune system to produce in order to heal us from any little sickness or ailments the body's going under, basically stress. But when you live in chronic stress from pollution and the glyphosate and stress levels and being exposed to TV lights at nighttime until 10 p.m. and all that stuff, and your circadian rhythms off, you're gonna get chronic inflammation. And this is why so many people wake up achy. That is not a normal thing of aging. This is why we're aging faster than ever. And this is also why we're dealing with so much disease and therefore recovery issues. Now, the second thing you have to also understand is what does inflammation have to do with recovery? Well, basically it comes down to a couple things. The first one are your free radical levels and the buildup of it in the human body. Without going into depth, what you need to understand is that free radicals are kind of like your body's pollution. Whenever you move or get stressed or really do anything, it kind of produces this pollution-like effect where free radicals get dispersed in the body and under normal circumstances, you're able to clear this as your blood circulates and you do some basic exercise and things of that nature. And if, as long as you're sleeping and eating healthy, you're good to go. But again, due to our lifestyles, this starts to elevate chronically. And when you mix lifting in with this, this becomes a huge problem. The second thing about inflammation is essentially your body is never in a state of rest and digest when you're chronically inflamed. Your central nervous system is elevated. And the reason it's elevated is because it's chronically inflamed and therefore you're never getting the recovery or the rest you need. This is why so many people in modern America or really just anywhere in the world are sleeping eight, nine hours sometimes and still not feeling recovered. It's because of this chronic inflammation response. Now, what can you do about this? Well, it's actually really simple. There's a whole list of different integrative practices that I do every single day, and I'm gonna give you all of them, and you can see which ones you can start implementing, which I promise are gonna help your gains right now. Integrative practice number one that you can do instantly to improve some recovery is gonna be what's called grounding. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of armchair PubMed warriors coming at me saying grounding's not real. And I have no clue why this is, because if you actually look on scientific journals online, you're gonna find a humongous amount of mounting evidence, not just proving it's real, but the effects are so jaw-dropping I have no clue what people are talking about when they say this is pseudoscience. I think they just heard it and started calling it pseudoscience without like literally just doing a Google search. I mean, there's so much evidence for grounding that like a 13 year old could find this for a school project. This isn't something where you have to read like an ample amount of body of literature and deduce if this study was accurately set up and this one, no. So let me read this first study for you. The effects of grounding, earthing, 
on inflammation, the immune response, wound healing, and prevention and treatment of chronic inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. Basically, it was a study set up, and what I wanna focus on are the results of this study. If you wanna read the whole paper, I'll try to remember to link it in the description box. The first image I'm gonna show is from an 84-year-old diabetic woman who had an eight-month-old non-healing wound. So you can see the wound was open. This actually comes from inflammation problems. This is why diabetics have to chop off their limbs a lot of the time. It has to do with free radical buildup, like we talked about earlier, and poor circulation. Basically, their blood circulation is really crappy and their inflammation is super high. So their wounds don't heal. In two weeks of grounding, you can see figure B. Look how healed that is. That thing was wide open, that wound, for eight months and was not healing no matter what treatments the doctors gave her. In two weeks of grounding, putting her feet on bare earth, she was able to heal to that degree, and then two weeks later, it got even better. So for those who don't know what grounding is, I just realized I didn't explain this in the beginning, it's when you touch your bare feet or body to earth to receive negative ions that the earth emits compared to the positive charge in the atmosphere and air. Now, there's other ways to ground besides just touching your feet and body in nature and on earth, and it works exceptionally well when you're on soil and grass. There are grounding sheets they sell though, and these can be hugely beneficial for controlling your inflammatory response. You can literally just sleep on these at night and you're gonna see some huge benefits. Now, besides just that image, we can show more images. I'll show the second image here on the screen of another wound that healed from the effects of grounding. And then we're gonna show infrared imaging, also done in this study, to showcase the changes in inflammation according to infrared imaging. And then on top of that, they also did a pain test using a placebo control. So they had a placebo group and a real grounding group and controlled the testing here to see if there was a pain response that was positively associated for people who did grounding versus not. And yes, there was a humongous positive association in the amount of pain they were feeling after the intervention. So mind blow, the thing that we evolved in, aka nature, aka the earth and touching it, is actually really important for us to stay in. Now again, a lot of you can't do what I do. I live like a fucking hippie out in the country. I'm always meditating in my yard. That's why I do it on the grass so often. Now you don't have to do that. Just buy some grounding sheets. It's gonna make a huge difference. Second integrative practice, which is really more a general overview, is gonna be gut health and cleanliness. What you need to understand is that everything you put into your gut that your gut sees as a possible pathogen or something bad, it's going to excrete. This is what uh, famously got coined as leaky gut syndrome. From all the different chemicals we put in our soil whenever we consume food, there seems to be this issue, especially with glyphosate, but that's a video for another time, where a lot of the food we consume is actually leaking from our guts into the bloodstream, causing an inflammation response because your immune system now has to clear out whatever pathogen has been leaked out of your gut. This is actually something incredibly intelligent that your body does. So if you consume something bad, it doesn't want to digest it. It wants to excrete it and get rid of it. But the problem is, is most of the foods we're eating nowadays are actually causing this issue. This is why so many people are dealing with constipation, diarrhea, loose stool, hard stool, discolored stool. These things are kind of gross to talk about, but it's hugely important. And to keep it short and simple for today's video, because I can go into this in depth in future videos, the color of your poop, the hardiness, the firmness, and you don't want it too firm or too soft, matters hugely. The amount you're pooping, the frequency, all of these things are things you need to be paying attention to. Now, when it comes to gut health, that is so in depth, I can't cover it in this video, but it's really simple. Basically, if anything upsets your stomach when you eat it, don't eat it. And I know from my own personal experience, I love certain foods that always upset my stomach and I kept eating them. This was one of the biggest game changers for me. Cardio slash flow training. Now I'm gonna be doing a future video on what I call flow training. To me, flow training is basically any kind of locomotion exercise like cardio-based running or biking, etc., or it's things like yoga, ATG and end range tissue work, things that are movement-based basically, where you keep a higher heart rate you're moving the body and you're trying to create flow in the body rather than rigidity, which is what lifting creates. Now, the reason this 
is so important to incorporate into your program, specifically more cardio-based ones. So I'm talking sleds, assault bike, even just basic running, or if you're into BJJ or Muay Thai or something, cool, keep doing that shit. What you want to understand is that blood flow, that circulation is very healing to the body. In fact, circulation we're going to be talking about in a second when I mentioned saunas is one of the most important ways to clear up all the free radicals and therefore reduce your inflammation response. This is why people tend to feel better after they start doing a little bit of cardio. Now, you do have to be careful. If you become a cardio king, that is the total opposite adaptation of lifting weights. So you shouldn't be doing cardio for like 50 minutes, three, four times a week, super strong. Strenuous. Do it just enough and start really easy if you haven't been doing any, like even five to 10 minutes goes a long way, and progressively increase it to a tolerable amount over time and compare if it's causing any interference effect on your actual weight training. Sauna, real simple, oxygen rich blood is circulating through the body. There's also a whole host of other issues with misfolded proteins and how sauna affects that. I will be covering this actually on my future YouTube channel, which is uh, the company's name is Unity. Don't tell anyone, but that's gonna be coming out soon. A new YouTube channel is gonna be coming out. And it's really gonna be covering stuff like this, holistic practices, meditation, sauna, ice bath, flow training, lifting weights for something other than just building strength and muscle. How about health and function? I'm gonna be talking about all sorts of stuff on this new channel, but sauna, man, one of the best things you can do. It's so good, I'm actually purchasing soon an infrared sauna that's outdoor friendly. I'm spending way too much money on it, but that's how important my health is. Now, you don't have to go buy a sauna. Sign up at a 24 hour membership you know, gym that's like 10, 20 bucks a month. Almost all of them have saunas nowadays. That alone, the sauna, and if shoot, if you can find the cold plunge, which we'll be getting to in a second, oh man, the effects on your inflammation and your, your health in general are gonna be so huge this will hugely help out your lifting. So we talked about sauna, aka fire. We need to talk about ice, aka cold plunging or ice baths. So you guys know I love my cold plunge. I bought a $9,000 cold plunge sitting on my patio. Now, I promise you I'm not that rich. I was so stressed when I spent that much money on this. Like, it was giving me anxiety how much money I spent on this. But I realized this was literally an investment in my health. I, full disclosure, do not have health insurance because it is way too expensive. America is just rough like that. If you're an entrepreneur, you either pay thousands of dollars every month or you have no health insurance. And so I look at things like this as an investment in me. Now, what does cold plunging do? Well, first off, very obviously, it makes your body cold. And so inflammation levels actually just dramatically go down from it. Now, here's where everyone freaks out. They say, oh, but my gains are gonna go away. We want good inflammation after we train. Yes, I realize that you can do this the incorrect way. Now, the scientific literature is incredibly clear. There is no negative effects on both strength or muscle gain if you create a four hour window away from your workout schedule. So if you train at 12, you should not ice bath in the next four hours after you're done training. And as long as you abide by that rule, you're gonna be good. Now, here's the kicker. For the last year, I've been doing ice baths, and I would say about 50% of the time, I ice bath after I train. You might ask, why would I do that when the literature talks about possibly losing gains? My theory is that I don't think advanced lifters will lose any gains from this. I actually think it'll help your lifting when you're advanced. You have to understand when the human body is squatting 660 pounds like I have, when the human body is deadlifting 760 pounds, that is not normal inflammation. I deadlift more weight than the vast majority of the human population ever in its existence will ever do. So when you get more advanced, the rules start to change a little bit. And I found for me personally, when I do this after workouts, my strength increases. I actually hit that 660 squat when I was doing ice baths. In fact, I think I did an ice bath after I hit that 660 squat. It's never affected me on strength or size. And actually, if you dive into the literature, it's very 50-50. Most of the literature that shows less gains in strength or size. In fact, actually, there's no paper I found where there was less strength. There's only some papers where there's less gains, muscle gains, and these were in rank beginners. So like, of course, if you're a rank beginner, you shouldn't be nuking your inflammation level. But if you're someone more advanced, I don't even think that window applies. But then again, this is just my theory. This is not scientifically backed. Last two here. We're going to combine them together because this video is getting long. Meditation and bio whoop. 
Now, I am not sponsored by Whoop, but let's start with meditation first. Meditation is something that if I had to choose between working out or meditating, in a heartbeat, it would be meditation. Meditation has made my life better in every possible imagined way you could ever perceive. Like, it, it's so stark what meditation does. And it's not just me. I have clients who meditate on a regular basis. I work with a lot of clients on a more holistic practice. That's actually what my new company, Unity, is gonna be about. And I even have some of my Prime Strength members who work with me for powerlifting where I have them practicing meditation. And all of them will report the huge benefits on not just your mind growth, and it literally grows your mind. Meditation hypertrophy all the parts of your brain that you want to increase and actually atrophies all the stress response of your brain. For instance, the amygdala decreases in size in people who meditate in eight week studies. Like literally in just eight weeks, you will see a huge reduction in the amygdala, which is your stress response of the brain. It cross coordinates with the hippocampus. And these two things regulate things like your emotionality, your stress levels, et cetera, et cetera. Besides all those benefits, the number one thing meditation has done for me is I have noticed a huge effect in my body health. And I honestly can't really explain this. We've seen a decrease in the empirical evidence when you meditate with pain. However, there's no hard evidence to prove this, but I'm absolutely certain that when I meditate on a regular basis, my body is less inflamed and I'm healthier. And this is something I will die on this hill on. I have tracked it on my Whoop. My Whoop has picked up, and this is why I mentioned to buy a Whoop. My Whoop has actually picked up this correlation because what I do is I input when I meditate on the Whoop app. And so what it does is it calculates any kind of correlation between activities you do and your recovery score the next day. And they actually sent me a message a few months ago that whenever I meditate, my recovery is 9% better. Now get this, when I do ice baths and other things, it increases it by about five to 6%. So meditation is shown to improve my recovery according to my WHOOPS data, the aggregated data, more than anything else. And that's why you should own a WHOOP. This thing will track your HRV, your heart rate variability, the most important factor in knowing if you're recovered or not. On top of that, they use an algorithm that calculates all the other factors. I'm not sponsored by these assholes. I reached out for a sponsorship. They hugely denied me, like straight up an email. They're like, we're not looking for anyone. I was like, fuck, because I really wanted to be sponsored by them. I actually love this product. To me, this is symbiosis with human consciousness. I think technology like this is amazing because it's a real Reading my body and giving me hard analyzed data to then combine with my conscious awareness that when I wake up and I feel certain ways and I can compare that to the data, I can start to organize a clearer worldview on what's happening both internally and externally. And I think it's an amazing piece of device. Pair it with meditation, do your ice baths, do your sauna, do your grounding. In future videos, we're gonna talk about sleep, diet, all sorts of other things that really go into this as well. But I feel like those are always covered at nauseum. That's today's video. Wow, this was a long one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're interested in coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, I help people with this. And actually, let me close with a final message real quick. Anyone who's interested in a more holistic-based approach where I completely change your lifestyle around, this is something I'm looking for volunteers to receive a reduced rate of one-on-one -on -one coaching for my new company. Now, full disclosure is still not going to be cheap coaching because I'm going to get hands on with you. But these are things that I'm going to be changing your entire lifestyle around. We're going to be creating morning routines for you or evening routines, depending on when your schedule permits or just making kind of your daily schedule. We're going to be discussing factors like meditation practices, contemplation practices, and other mind training. We're going to be doing flow training, whether it's yoga and range work, some kind of stuff like that. We're going to be taking over your, what I call vitality practices, which is your ice baths and your saunas or other things with your nutrition, gut health, etc. We are going to cover every aspect of your life. If you're interested in transforming your life around, your mind, your body, your physicality, your fitness, your functionality, all these things, your health, I'm looking for people to basically show off when I open up my new company because this is something I've become completely passionate about. And we can also focus on powerlifting and strength goals or bodybuilding goals while we're doing this because they literally go hand in hand. That's like the coolest thing about this. So if you're interested, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching using the link down in the description box down below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Love you guys.